This is a single board computer based on the venerable 6502. You can set it up like a desktop computer with a keyboard, mouse, gamepad, storage, display, and speakers. But we're not doing all that today. Let's start with the basics and use only the serial port. All you need is an ordinary USB cable. Just connect this port to a Windows, Mac, or Linux system. No drivers are needed. Everything we'll do starts with this project template. I'll be using the CC65 compiler, but there's also a template for LLVM MOS. The template simply prints Hello World. Pressing F5 will build the program, upload it to the hardware, and execute it. You can see the output here. I've attached the VGA output to a capture card, so you can see the output is also shown there. Now let's write some code. Or not. Let's have AI write some programs for us. Might as well have some fun before Skynet goes online. I have some prompts prepared, which we'll work through in real time. We'll look at the good and the bad, and there will be some silent parts, which I won't edit out. I'm using Anthropic's models and GitHub Copilot. These are considered premium requests, but you get 50 free requests every month. And because GitHub Copilot is built into VS Code, the only thing you need to do is log in when it asks. To get started, all you do is open the panel and tell it to do something. Like print the first 10 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. It's going to tell me what I just asked it and make the program for us. Let's run it. Okay, excellent. It uh, tells me here that this is the output I should expect, and if we look on the screen, that, that is the correct output. Let's try something a little bit more challenging. Print Mandelbrot using code page 437 extended characters with ANSI color. Okay, it's telling me that uh, the CC65 compiler doesn't support floating point and is going to use fixed point arithmetic in 16.16 .16 format. Okay, I don't know why it decided to do that, but that's going to be very difficult because the CC65 compiler doesn't have 64 bit ints, so this, this fixed point math is going to be impossible. So we'll tell it ints are 16 bits. Yes, I'm right, of course I'm right. I'm a human, you're an AI. So now it's gonna to switch to 8.8 .8 fixed point format. And that, that we can do in a 32 bit integer. Okay, let's build it and see if there's errors. No errors. And we'll send it. Okay, this looks good. It's certainly not high resolution, but it is what we expect. Let's try making a game with some user interaction. I've asked it to make a game where I have to guess what number between 1 and 99 the computer picked. It should tell me too high or too low and count the number of tries. Okay, it's thinking about it for a bit. Okay, it says I can build it and run it using that command, which I cannot do. I don't know why it keeps wanting to run it like it's a local program. Okay, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 99. Too low. Too high. Too high. 63. 62. Correct. The number is 62. I guessed it in six tries. 
Let's run it again and, and try it one more time. Enter your guess. 62. Correct, I guessed it in one try. Okay, well this is because AI didn't seed my random number generator, so every time the program runs it's going to come up with the same sequence of random numbers. And we, we can see here at the very beginning of the program, the first thing it does is generate the secret, but it hasn't seeded the random number generator. So I'm going to tell it to seed the random number generator. I'm also going to tell it to read the docs, because I happen to know that the AI just loves ignoring the documentation, but it absolutely must read the documentation here in order to get to the, the hardware random number generator on this board. Oh, very good. Uh, it actually went and used the CC65 randomize function which is a, uh, a custom function built into that compiler, and that will use the hardware entropy and generate random numbers every time. So let's give it another try. Sixty-two. Okay, it is, it is now picking a different number. Ten, correct, I guessed it in four tries. That's better than average. Let's try something with graphics. You'll need something plugged into the VGA connector to see graphics. I've asked it to make a dragon fly across the screen using sprites and make it repeat. It's going to look through the program to see if it can find any established patterns, which there aren't. And so it moves on to reading the documentation. I'm always encouraged whenever it reads the documentation first, because whenever it doesn't, it usually fails. Imagine that. All right, it says it's done reading the documentation. Now it's going to write the code. Yeah, sometimes things take a bit. Not long enough to go make a cup of coffee, but certainly enough to have a few sips. There we are. It, uh, it wants to check for the header file. Okay, it's going to be spending an indefinite amount of time searching my file system, and it won't find it, even though the uh, IDE here knows exactly where the header is. So what we can do is select the header, which I've already brought up, and anchor it down here and say, here's the header. It's going to make some adjustments to how it accesses the registers. All right, it wants to build it and see if there's any errors. There's no errors. Let's send it. All right, this is the best dragon I've seen so far. Let's see if AI can play music. Of course, you'll need something plugged into the audio jack to hear sound. This time I'm explicitly asking to read the docs because it won't, uh, by default usually. And it won't get very far if it doesn't. I've asked it to play a song, not scales. And I'm using VSync for timing, that way it'll be easier to integrate into a video game that also uses VSync. We can see it went and fetched the documentation. 
It's going to look for some examples. And it says it thinks, it's, it thinks it understands what it needs to do. Should only take a moment longer. And there we go. It's got some code. Mary had a little lamb. It builds without errors. Let's send it. Well, that was fast. Let's see if it can correct the speed on its own. Okay, the problem there is it wasn't separating the notes. So let me give it a hint to what it, for what it needs to do. I'm going to tell it the notes run together. And then I'm going to tell it you need to stop the note and let it release while beginning a new one on the next channel. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. I would call that a success. It played a song. It was a recognizable song. Uh, all the notes sounded correct to me. And we only had to give it a couple hints here. Uh, I think that's enough for now. Uh, I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching. Links are in the description.